Last week, we began a discussion on mandating personal behavior, but now we want to continue with the balance of the social contract versus personal freedom. Are laws treating the symptoms of a problem or spreading the virus? If I didn't know drugs were bad, are they still bad? This is Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. What defines the social contract? What makes something right or wrong? If I didn't know something was bad, is it still bad? Thank you for watching CounterPoint. Give us a call at 844-777-9311. Tweet and send Facebook comments to Gerard MC at the CounterPoint, former Indiana State Trooper and Chicago Police Officer Corey Braddock, author and creative Charles Burns, and artist producer from Art Science Incorporated, Theodore McClendon. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Counterpoint. Really appreciate you guys because we're trying to figure out this whole notion of the social contract and personal behaviors. So I want to ask you this. Let's define the social contract. Throughout society, we have these norms. Some of these norms are considered norms that are good, things we're supposed to think, things we're supposed to do, laws we're supposed to abide by. But where do these social norms or the, where does the social contract come from? Anyone want to, you know, discuss that? Where does it come from? Well, I, I may be disagreed with, of course. It doesn't matter. But I, my, my belief is uh, that it's, some people call it the law of nature. I call it uh, the law of God. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the establishment of what we call what is moral, what is not moral, what is just, what is not just, uh, is, can be found within the word of God. Mm -hmm. And governments have been established uh, by it. Uh, some governments have gone uh, against it and seen in many of those cases, those governments have failed. Um, and, um, that that would be my my emphatic stand that Hindu God or, uh, or Islam, I, I, Islam Jehovah Muslim God, God because, because are we polytheistic here? Well, you know, I, I because, am because if mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson were here, an mm -hmm. astrophysicist, mm -hmm. he would say, first of all, you can't even define God. That's beyond the realm of man to define a creator. And astrophysicist says you define a creator by the science. Well, I mean, I, I so, think that okay, so, saying the So creator, you mentioned the word moral, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Moral means, it doesn't mean good or bad. Moral means obligation. So mm -hmm. do you believe that we have, the social contract consists of obligations that we have to ourselves and our fellow citizens? Absolutely. What are those obligations? Um, I believe that those obligations consist of things that help life to persist. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that helps to promote safety in others as well as yourself, helps to promote health in others as well as yourself, uh, helps to promote justice for others as well as yourself, then I believe that is what is moral. That's well put because now we're getting close to what the social contract is. You're saying the promotion of things that are good. A Socrates talked about this. Man should always strive for his high, the, for the highest good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't necessarily understand that in natural law and in plant life, for instance, plants strive for their highest good. A tree bears fruit. That's its highest good. Of course, it provides shade and shelter for animals, but its highest good is to is is providing that fruit. So you believe that? So it looks like you believe natural law more than you believe this this pie in the sky God that you talk about. No, I believe that people have referred to the existence or the law of God as 
nickname the law of nature. Okay. They called it Mother Nature. Okay, but so, really what they're talking about uh, is from a source. I still don't know being. where we get the social contracts from, okay? okay. Because, because hey, this is where I'm going. You can never read a biblical or religious text and still, as a human being, have a feel for what's good or bad. Theo, talk to me, man. Where do we get the social contract? Well, where well, does the social contract come from? The social contract is to promote an orderly society, mm -hmm. okay, at, at, at its face. And to provide safety and a level of, of decency and civility. Uh, however, if the people enforcing that are using it for their own personal ends or their own uh, ends, for instance, you can have an orderly society that can ultimately be filled with automatons mm -hmm. that just follow orders. Ooh. And that's not good either. Mm. You see, so there comes a time when the norm has to be deviated from uh, for the greater good. This is interesting. So, uh, Charles, you mentioned safety. Good. Theo, you mentioned order. Good. Corey Braddock, talk to me, man. Social contract. Can we define a social contract in society? Where does it come from? How do we know what to and what not to do? Well, it comes from, I believe, having been a law enforcement officer, and the law enforcement officers are simply the soldiers that are doing the enforcement for those who are in power. they just the, the rats in the game, you know, bringing the crumbs together, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's really difficult for me to, society has to operate. Let's remove benefit. Mm -hmm. That means a whole bunch of different things. Society has to operate and move that's why we have the social contract. And anybody that has behavior that hinders the movement of society and operating goes against the contract. Let's talk about, ooh, this is good. What hinders the movement, gentlemen? What hinders order in society? We can go into examples now, Corey. Well, well only a small group of people actually benefit. Everybody else is just on the, What's that? that the treadmill. The treadmill. You know, mm -hmm. so that those people can benefit. Um, you know, a lot of us, you know, when you look at people who are most marginalized, society benefits greatly off of that. Society does getting, or those at the top benefit? Society. Off Police officers list. benefit from it. The mm -hmm. prosecutors benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Politicians benefit from it by creating fear. I mean, all of this stuff. I mean, and most people won't, don't even recognize that they are at the bottom holding everything else up. Oh, wow. Indeed, wow. indeed. And, and, and that dawned on me in recent years when you look back at, as a matter of fact, I think Ronald Reagan even said this, mm -hmm. we can spend our way out of this. In other words, he told people to spend money, which essentially is people down on the lower rungs. Mm. Spend money, spend money on your survival and spend money on trinkets because it's those people that buttress the entire society, Yeah, you see. Um, uh, there was a, a study, uh, justice study done, um, Department of Justice done, a study done on the people in um, Ferguson. Mm -hmm. How many people are taxed in and out of, you know, uh, going into court, you go to any, any circuit court these days, it's all black and Hispanic. You know, those people are being fined, taxed, you know, where are all of the red light cameras and all of the um, speed cameras? They're not in neighborhoods where people are paying taxes on their home. Mm -hmm. In those same neighborhoods, you got people who don't pay taxes. These re these stores and restaurants who say, uh, we'll accept Link, but it, you got to have cash. And by the way, if you only have your debit card, you got to give us this extra 2 or $3. So they've been violated by the social contract. This is that, interesting. But, it so, is. Uh, the but uh, the, what he's speaking of is, is what we refer to as the black tax. The black tax, absolutely. You know, prices are higher even though you make less money. Mm -hmm. You're taxed more. The parking meters have an exorbitant amount of of cost in a neighborhood where the people don't make nearly as much. This is interesting. So I want to get back to, uh, you, so we had safety, we had order, uh, and you mentioned benefit. I like that. And then fear and love. Let's look at these as two components. Should we do things out of fear or love? 
Because see, here's once again the social contract. The social contract says that I stop at a stop sign, right? Mm -hmm. Why do I stop at a stop sign? Is it because of God? Or is it because of it's safety? It, it, yeah, it's, it's in fear of bringing harm to someone else. Okay. Or to yourself. But, or to yourself. Or to yourself. Which can, goes back to. Can we flip it though? Can we flip the fear to being something other than fear that makes us do something? I mean, are we always afraid of things? That's why we do things? That's why we obey sustain the, the social contract? Or can, or can the social contract be proactive and positive? Do you guys see where I'm going? Stop it, 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 could be. Be. Okay. So, it could be. So, so we're dealing with pain and pleasure. Yeah. Can we be motivated in a positive way through love? Or does everything have to be, if you don't do that, I'm going to mm -hmm. punish you? Well, it's interesting that you say that because everything that we do is punitive when we get caught. Mm. Every, laws are written for punitive measures, right? They're not written for. They're not written. They're not written to. They're not written for the word you used earlier, benefit. They're written. Oh, for, it benefits others, not you. But it, but but the law is written to benefit to punish, but not benefit. Exactly. Well, I That's think what that I there is a benefit though. Uh, to laws, just what you mentioned as far as a stop sign. I mean, the benefit is you don't have a head-on collision with someone. We're not talking about that that basic uh, premise. Well, we're we, we mentioned it earlier, though. I understand that, but 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 that when I mean, I'm not talking about that benefit, I'm talking about the overall benefit of that is control, controlling the population. You know, the law as a law enforcement officer, I wanted voluntary compliance. That's why you have laws. We mm. want people to comply, mm. right? Without the big man over you, okay? But that's not the law enforcement officer, the police officer stopping you. That's someone who's writing these laws who represent who are voting them in the office, okay? And it even goes higher than that. I don't need to split the hairs, but I mean, this is a lot more, a lot deeper than just, yeah. you know, you being punished for the ticket. If uh -huh. you can pay a ticket, don't nobody care. You don't care. Right. Okay? And society don't care when you pay the ticket because they got theirs. But then, when well, you took at the populations who are most affected, Oh, they care. Social contract. Uh, should I be subject to it? Should I abide by it? Uh, should, should the social contract, we'll talk about this in the second segment, should the social contract interfere with what I want to do personally with my own life? Anybody want to take, a, take a, a gander at that before we go to the break? Well, I, I think so, because if, if you have a lack of compliance, and, and you're strictly monitoring yourself, then what's to say that you're not negatively impacting someone else mm. doing what you want to do? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think definitely uh, the positive part in that, uh, as far as those laws existing, is that it keeps you from imposing on someone else's rights or mm -hmm. someone else's existence. But if I want to do something on my own, if I want to get drunk, Okay. Am I imposing on anyone other than myself? It depends on what you do I'm just a while you're getting drunk. I'm just if asking. If you're driving okay. while you're ah, drunk. Ah, there we go. If you're walking down the street being boisterous while you're drunk. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I, I got to go to the next area. segment. Thank you for going there because you're taking us right into the next segment, Charles Burns. Thank you for watching Counterpoint. We will be back shortly. Tweet me. Post on Instagram or send me a message on Facebook. Let's start the conversation. Your voice is important on CounterPoint. Where do we draw the line between the social contract and personal freedom? How do we define social norms? Who do we hold responsible for these norms? Thank you for watching CounterPoint. Call us at 844-777-9311. Tweet and send Facebook comments to Gerard MC. I've got Corey Braddock, Charles Burns, and Theodore McClendon at the CounterPoint. Charles Burns, you mentioned abusing, let's say, some sort of substance, but, it but you're saying that you're not violating the social contract as long as you use the substance and don't harm anyone else? Yeah, and, and so I, I can get drunk at home, 
I can use drugs at home. I'm not violating a social contract. And, and let me establish for the record that I, I am not a proponent of using uh, controlled substances. Okay. I, I don't, uh, and I don't advocate it. Other than uh, if you get a broken leg and you might have to get well, some of Well, uh, actually, I, I, had, um, I had the Achilles, uh, an Achilles uh, tendon rupture. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I didn't have the choice for them not to sedate me. But after the surgery, I, I still had a full bottle of pain meds. I, I didn't. Oh, take. you a good man. Uh, but you a good man. <laughs> but in any case, uh, not everybody has that pain threshold. So uh -huh. I understand. But uh, in any case, because of what society dictates and allows right now, I, I think that definitely it depends on how you engage something mm -hmm. that makes that determines if it's OK or not. Uh, For whom? The individual or society? Oh, that's, that's the one I want to get back okay. to. Because, because is it okay for me to just abuse myself? Well, is no. that okay? No, he, because I think that becomes an expense eventually on society. Someone's going to have to but pay But does it matter? The, does it matter? Well, I think it does matter. Okay. It's, it, and, and definitely when you determine if, if deter, uh, thinking about the tax bracket where that mm -hmm. person is, that determines who's going to be responsible for, for the bill. Okay. Okay. I think we can say these norms and these the social contract is, is it, it's good in so far as it can help prevent chaos and anarchy. However, there are times, as I mentioned in the earlier segment, where they can be deviated from. Mm -hmm. You know, that lovely laptop in front of you was from a, an absolute nonconformist. You know, some would say a deviant mm -hmm. because he didn't didn't really conform to, to too much that most people he conform to. You, he, he wouldn't even conform to Steve Wozniak. Exactly. His, his partner. Half the time he couldn't wear shoes, you know, until he discovered New Balance. And he didn't bathe. Indeed. Steve Jobs. But <laughs> it, 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 he did something for the greater good, mm -hmm. okay? He, he, he revolutionized an industry. So did he break or bend the social norm for a greater good? Oh, wow, man, we then we went into yeah, the philosophical I say, realm. I would say bend. 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 Oh, oh, wow, man. I'm, man, we might have to do part three. <laughs> so, so, so this is interesting. You know, Corey Braddock, I want to go back to law enforcement, and I want to look at insurance, too, when we look at social, social norms and when we look at the social contract. Let's look at an insurance rate. Okay. Now, we know that they're subjective. Yes. Now, there's an objective aspect to it in terms of mathematical actuary or whatever, uh, but your zip code pretty much determines, you know, what the rate is going to be. However, if I'm a 25-year-old male who's been in seven accidents from 16 to 25, and I try to buy a Corvette, it's obvious why my rate is higher, right? It's Social not, contract, it's right? It's not because of the Corvette. What is it because of? It's because of your behavior, the yeah. risk that you pose to the insurance company. And that's when we talk about actuaries. What they do is they translate behavior into a mathematical formula, which can be quanti uh, quantified. Yeah. And so that's what we're talking about. If you don't have that risky behavior, you fall into a category where your rates are not high. So can the social contract be quantified or can a social contract be qualified? Well, <laughs> there's a fine line there. It's, mm -hmm. it's an art and a science. Yeah. Because certainly a, a large degree of it can be quantified. Mm -hmm. But there, there's qualifications involved as well there, 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 uh, that makes it an, an inexact science. Mm -hmm. It Indeed. doesn't have to be exact, though. No, mm -hmm. no. But it could be it should be more exact than non exact. Okay. So I would agree with that. But again, it's it's a balance between the quantitative and the qualitative. And see, this is the hard part because uh, let's say I let's say I smoke marijuana every night in a state that doesn't that hasn't legalized marijuana. Have I violated a social contract? Probably because it's illegal, right? But Not I'm if you haven't been caught. I'm in the privacy of my home. I'm in the privacy of my home. How can you violate a contract and you haven't been caught? Hmm. So are you saying laws only exist if there is a culprit waiting to be caught? Bingo. Really? You believe that? 
So is this, this, is this why right. people slow down when you see that state trooper on the side of the road? Man, I'm going 75, I'm in a 55. Hold on. This brings up something that I was thinking as we were sitting here mm -hmm. earlier when you talk about the stop sign. Um, there does come a point where the laws of nature supersede man's laws. Mm. Case in point, um, if you've ever driven out west, or even in the Alleghenies or, 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 or the mountains uh, in the east, there's this place along the end of the road where there's a sharp curve. It's, they call it runaway truck. In other words, you can't hit the brakes, run up this slope and you might survive. The, the speed limit has nothing to do with that, but the, Newton's laws start to come in. Inertia, centrifugal force, momentum, yeah, you see? It may, you know, it may say 30 miles an hour, but maybe you need to be going 15. Yeah, so much for the social contract, yeah, right? Wait, 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 this, is, this is science. Exactly. Specifically, yeah. only right there, though. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Every, everywhere else, it may not be that. Yeah, but in that situation, that's the only, that's the only thing that counts in that situation. Ergo, right? and yeah. it's, it's, only if you get Call. Yeah. See, I want to get back to the, you know, what we do in our personal lives that may be considered derogatory or or harmful to us. And how do we gauge that against the rest of society? You know, uh, you know, getting drunk, of course, uh, using illicit drugs, uh, using experimental or recreational drugs, uh, eating mushrooms. Some people, some people live wonderful lives and are really aren't affected. Bias. So why is it considered illicit? Because someone said so? You see what I'm saying? Well, I, I always look at um, the effect as far as moving forward from that event. What are the possible effects or impacts that that activity can have on that individual? Mm -hmm. And if we just think about on that individual, then after that, what then becomes the burden on society because of what that individual imposed on themselves, mm -hmm. afflicted themselves with. And so is, is it okay that you do it recreational and, and you're, you're in the confines of your own home, but after you get to a point where you can no longer function because of it, mm -hmm. you're addicted now, now whose responsibility is it? Mm -hmm. and so you're saying once your personal uh, indulgence. choice, mm -hmm. indulgence, blends into an insurance rate going up for others, now that's probably, that, you're saying that's problematic. Right, exactly. Mm. And, and, and here's, here's, I think, something that we have to maybe entertain. We, we talk about in this, in this country, freedom, 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 mm -hmm. freedom. But in this country, actually, we have liberty, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different than carte blanche freedom. Mm -hmm. Liberty is freedom within certain confines within certain boundaries, which for us would be our laws, mm -hmm. which means you're free as long as you operate within these laws. The laws exist so that not only you can be free, but others around you can remain free as well, which when you look at slavery, slavery, we are, when we look, think about the country, what the country talks about, all men are created equal mm -hmm. except for those. Mm -hmm. And they weren't exercising, or we didn't have access to liberty. Mm -hmm. And so we were violated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a result. So when you just have carte blanche freedom, then someone else is being violated. Freedom's not just the, free, you, 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 still, you still have the freedom to do the right thing though. You still have freedom to do the high moral thing, the high edifying thing. Freedom isn't something that is just considered uh, bad behavior. I can do whatever I want. You no. also can do the right thing. You can, That's freedom as but well. But the human tendency is to eat the forbidden fruit. So you believe we have to have a social con you we have to have a social contract to exist in society. Absolutely. Mm. Someone's gonna have that urge, someone, not everyone, but someone's gonna have the urge to overstep their bounds into someone else's boundary. Someone's going to have the urge to impose. We see it all the time in certain neighborhoods with loud music. As uh, uh, Corey reminded me, how we uh, we share some history with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
in any case, you could ride down the street and you're blasting your music. Well, it's only hurting me. It's only, but people in their houses, you didn't pay rent or a mortgage on their house, but mm -hmm. you're imposing on their freedom Imposition. to. Imposition. Okay, right. okay. Right. Okay, okay. Encroaching um, on their space. Okay, okay. To answer, I want to go back to when you said uh, insurance and the rates going up. Uh, insurance companies have gotten, you know, pretty savvy with segmenting groups. Okay, so um, if you lie about your behavior, it, it would affect someone. If you're in a in a pool of people who are, say, good rated folks who pay lower rates, if you lie about it somehow and you get away with it, yes, that will affect them because your behavior is going to cause more losses for that group to pay. Mm -hmm. But if everybody does what they're supposed to do, and these um, these uh, uh, equations or these underwriters, they figure out truly what your behavior is and you put in the right segment, it won't affect everybody That's else. so funny that you mentioned that because I had two questions on it. Can you buy insurance knowing that you will do reckless activities? Another question I had was, should I lie to an insurance agent about my behaviors? People do it all the time because they want that lower rate. Yes, they do. They want that lower rate, yeah. you know. So, gentlemen, I'm going to be closing the, the show shortly. Um, do personal freedoms or personal vices, do they trump the social contract? Or does the social contract trump your personal vices? If we live in an orderly, if we want to live in an orderly society, we have to abide by the contract, period. Um, if you want to be a rogue or renegade, the social contract will put you where it needs you to be, and that is a way. Good, good, good. Theo. Indeed, the, the social contract is necessary. It, it prevents anarchy and chaos. Yeah. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, man, he going to end us with some, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he going to hit me. He going to hit me with the preacher, man. He going to go to the Bible on me. But, but you're right, you know, and, and it's a uh, um, golden rule, too, right? Do unto others. As you would have them to do unto you. Oh, my. Goodness, I tell you, I'm trying to stick with astrophysics <laughs> and ethics, and this guy goes biblical on me. Hey, thanks to my guests, Corey Braddock, Charles Burns, and Theodore McLennan. What do you think? Prohibition is over. More states are legalizing marijuana. What's next? Give me a call, 844-777-9311. Tweet me or send a Facebook comment at Gerard MC. Thank you for watching CounterPoint. Stay positive. I need you to always keep your head up and be encouraged to voice your counterpoint. Have a great week.